what is this thing? A kidney. It should be no huge surprise that we're talking about fluid volume regulation, maintaining fluid, getting rid of fluid. We're going to have to talk about the kidney a little bit. We get to talk about the kidney. We're going to talk about the urinary system and focus on the kidney at the end of the semester, but it helps to know a little bit about, um, about it now. So we're going to zoom in to, this is a, a kidney that's been cut through it, right? But we're going to zoom in to right here and look at what's going on, those little squiggles. You've actually seen this. You've seen a cross section of a nephron, which is a whole bunch of tubes. And those tubes is where urine is formed from blood. Eventually that urine is going to go out the ureter. So let's look at this. It's going to look a little scary. Um, you don't need to know tons of details, but I think it helps to have an idea of what happens in the kidneys when you're talking about regulating it to regulate blood volume. So here's the renal corpuscle. This is basically our blood, arterial. Our blood is coming in and it gets um, filtered into the nephron. So filtration occurs right here. And for filtration to occur, you know this, blood pressure matters. This, the pressure in this blood, hydrostatic pressure, osmotic pressure too, matters for how much filtration occurs. So decreased blood volume, already we can see how the kidney is going to help us with that. Decreased blood volume is gonna decrease pressure right here and decrease the amount is, that is filtered. It's a direct, simple mechanism decreased MAP is going to result in decreased filtration at the kidney and less filtrate, so less entering the nephron. I, um, if you didn't see this already, when it, after it enters the nephron, it eventually becomes urine. It can't become urine if it doesn't enter the nephron. So this means less becomes urine. The opposite is also true. So increased blood pressure results in more entering this nephron, more urine formation. The other places, so actually I think I have a circle here, that's going to happen right here. The other place we can regulate urine formation is going to be all along these pieces here. So in addition to filtration, which I've in, it, it's this first step, we also have some processes called reabsorption and, um, well, secretion, but reabsorption is actually what we care about here. So reabsorption means out of the nephron. To where? Back to the blood. I'm going to draw a blood vessel here. There actually are blood vessels. When reabsorption occurs, water, solutes, whatever it is that's being reabsorbed, is going to enter our blood vessels again instead of becoming urine. So higher reabsorption means less urine produced. This could be reabsorption of water or it could be reabsorption of sodium we're talking about, which then causes water to follow via osmosis. This process of reabsorption is going to occur all along these little paths here um, that we're not going to talk more in detail about until we get to the kidney, um, but it's after that filtration has occurred. Kidney in brief. So let's talk about aldosterone. I mentioned this hormone before. It's a vasoconstrictor, but it also is going to alter blood volume. It is um, a steroid hormone. So it's related to all these other steroid hormones, testosterone, progesterone, estrogen, estrogen that you know of, don't need to know the structures. That um, is why it's in the, produced in the adrenal cortex. And it is regulated by several things. I've already told you it's inhibited by AMP. We've, we've done that already. High blood pressure would inhibit aldosterone. It's also um, regulated by this, the main one is the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone mechanism. So 
low blood volume or pressure is detected by the kidney. Here's our sensor. The kidney releases renin. And I've told you this before, we'll see renin again. Um, yeah, this is going to result in the activation of angiotensin two from angiotensin one. Angiotensin one is going to activate aldosterone. So this renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism, renin angiotensin aldosterone system, RAS, is one mechanism for increasing aldosterone. High potassium, I actually don't want to go into this more. Um, it's going to be related to excre excretion of potassium. We'll come back to this at the end of the semester with um, regulation of um, electrolytes and fluid volume, which you think we're doing that now, right? We're going to do it more. Um, lastly, this is cool. Look at this. What, what is this? ACTH, CRH, um, hypothalamus, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. In addition to releasing cortisol, this also results in the release of aldosterone in response to stress. So those are the triggers. Really, this is the big one, number one. Number two, this is an inhibitor we've talked about. What does aldosterone do? It targets those kidney tubules, the ones I just showed you in the picture that go like this. <laughs> That's beautiful, right? So it's going to result in um, increased, and I wish this said reabsorption, increased reabsorption of sodium, which is going to cause water to follow that sodium. This is going to increase blood volume and then pressure. The um, yeah, reabsorption is a better word, but absorption is not wrong. It's just not how the kidneys are talked about. The other thing aldosterone does is vaso what constriction. Lovely. Let's look at this with another diagram. Here is stimulus decrease in pressure. This is that direct renal mechanism I told you about when I showed you the picture of a kidney. A decrease in volume is going to decrease pressure, decrease filtration by the kidneys. It's actually just flow through the kidneys that directly regulates your information. You're going to pee less if you have low blood pressure. It's a good thing. And that's just from the, the anatomy, the filtration of the kidney. The more complicated thing that happens at the same time, right? This, this takes a little longer, but it's gonna start in if you have low blood pressure is the renin system. Here, I showed this because this, this ties it all together. Look at this, decreased pressure inhibits baroreceptors, right? Decreased MAP equals decreased firing of, of baroreceptors that targets the sympathetic nervous system. You know that already. Um, it's going to actually target what we're talking about here. Um, I'm actually not positive. That's vasomotor that targets renin, so we're going to ignore that. Um, the sympathetic nervous system, um, along with targeting heart rate, vasoconstriction, stroke volume directly, sympathetic nervous system does all that, right? It's also going to um, target renin, re renin release from the kidneys. Renin is what activates angiotensin. Here it's a bit more detail that is done by these um, pro hormones, just like we saw with blood clotting. This is a cascade. You may have heard of ACE, angiotensin converting enzyme. ACE inhibitors will, will affect blood pressure. We'll use that as an example of applying your knowledge. So ACE inhibitors would prevent angiotensin II from um, being made. Angiotensin II has four effects. You already know one. We did this one, right? You know the angiotensin 
two was a trigger for aldosterone via the adrenal cortex to cause sodium reabsorption. Angiotensin two also results in ADH release in the posterior pituitary. Antidiuretic hormone. We'll look exactly at where this hormone acts when we get to the kidneys, but it's gonna be somewhere along this loop to cause reabsorption by the kidneys. So less urine. That's true with both of these. Antidiuretic, a diuretic makes you pee. Antidiuretic stops you from peeing. We will look more closely at both of these mechanisms when we get to the kidney, but I do want you to know that they um, increase reabsorption and that's how they're going to increase water retention by decreasing urine output um, and thereby increase blood pressure long-term because this is changing fluid volume. Angiotensin also increased thirst, so it acts on the hypothalamus to make you thirsty. That's convenient. Water intake. And lastly, but actually ironically, because firstly, I believe I told you this already early on, this is a short-term effect, even though my slide is labeled long-term effect. I told you these are all combobulated together. Like you can try to break down regulation of blood pressure by endocrine, nervous system, short-term, long-term, fluid volume, um, TPR, cardiac output, but they're all intertwined. And that's why I started by telling you like the hormones and what they do. Um, so it might be a good place to go back to that video and look at all these hormones, draw out how they're related to each other, what the effect of each one is. Because angiotensin has these four effects short-term and long-term. <laughs> Quickest is, is vasoconstriction, right? Okay, fun stuff. <laughs>